Hi, my name is Jason Lanier. I am here in the Hecla mine in Burke Gem, Idaho. Uh, and uh, I chose this place of all places to talk about why I am now shooting Sony and why I left Nikon. Uh, I have a, I've been shooting Nikon for my whole life. Uh, Nikon and I have a very sentimental, emotional relationship. I love Nikon. Um, I didn't leave Nikon because of a bitterness. There was no angry dispute. There was no angry divorce. With Nikon, it really was a matter of um, me finding something that is just so remarkably better, I made the switch. Um, I'm making this video not to bash Nikon, or Canon for that matter, because I'm going to talk about the different camera manufacturers. I'm making this video because I get this question by my followers, other photographers, like, this is one of the number one questions I get is, why did you leave Nikon? Why are you doing this? What, what is going on? And so I'm going to address you guys and tell you guys why I'm shooting Sony. So, to mark this momentous occasion, I have a very fancy list. You guys like that? Before I get into the list, let me explain how this happened. Um, I've been shooting Sony for about four months now, since July, be very beginning of July. Uh, at the time, I had a, an, I had a couple assignments coming up uh, to shoot in Detroit and to shoot in um, Ethiopia. And I wanted a camera, you know, when I'm running around with my D800, my D3, D4, D700, any of those cameras, I mean, you're talking a minimum you know, $2,500, $3,000 just in the body. You're talking about, you know, with, you know, depending on what lens you're using, but $1,200, $2,000 lens. So you're talking at easily $5,000 plus on your shoulder. And when you're going places like I do, like in a mine or an abandoned building in Detroit or wherever, where there are people who, A, don't want you there, and B, there are other bad folks out there who want to do something to you, you have to keep that in mind. When you're traveling abroad and there's, there's a lot more uh, concerns for theft and such, um, like when I went to Ethiopia, you, you have to keep those things in mind. I also wanted a, a camera that was a little bit more inconspicuous, not something that was just screaming, hey, this, this is a, a pro camera. And uh, I went to my local Best Buy and I bought um, the A6000. And pretty much the parameters for me buying a camera uh, for those purposes, to have one that's very light, compact, easy to use, so on and so forth, is I wanted something that I could take anywhere. Um, it didn't cost a lot of money, so if I did get mugged, and you might be watching this video saying, when's that going to happen? Guys, I've been carjacked in Paris. I've had my stuff, I've had my Suburban, rent, my rental Suburban, Parked across from Yankee Stadium, had the windows bashed out, stuff stolen, so I do get stuff stolen, so it is a concern for me. I went down to my local Best Buy, um, and uh, I, the parameters for me buying the camera were simple. It needs to shoot raw. I need to have complete functionality over all of the settings, ISO, shutter, exposure, uh, well, uh, ISO, shutter, and uh, f-stop. And I needed to be able to get some great shots with it. In the A6000 is 24 megapixels. And uh, you know, I took a look real quick at the Nikon mirrorless system. And uh, once I saw that the, the, the sensors in the, in the Nikon mirrorless system were so puny, I was like, there's no way I can use that. I mean, the printable size is like an eight by 10. It's ridiculous, you know? So I immediately gave up on the Nikon. And yes, I went looking for the Nikon at first. I was actually interested in the AW1, which is an underwater mirrorless camera. But when I realized the, the, the pictures would be such poor quality, I realized I couldn't do that. So then I really started studying the, 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 the sensor sizes of all of the mirrorless cameras and I saw that the Sony a6000, I mean that sensor is an APS-C uh, CMOS size sensor and uh, that's as big as the Nikon sensors that are crop frame and it's bigger than the Canon crop frame. I mean so all of you guys who have like 60D or whatever else, these little cameras down here, <laughs> they have better sensor, bigger sensor than your camera. That's kind of a moment for me. So um, I, bought, I, I bought the A6000, not expecting in any way for it to replace any of my gear, just a little add-on, maybe bring out if, it's a, if I'm going into a really nasty area or so on and so forth. And uh, I took it back to my family's uh, 4th of July party at the pool and I started shooting with it and literally I was blown away. I was shooting it and I sit next to my mom and I'm like, mom, you gotta check out this camera. And she's like, Jason, what's wrong with you? You have all these fancy cameras. What do you care about that for? And I said, oh my gosh. And I started messing around with the, the 11 frames a second and, and all this stuff. It just literally was mind blowing to me. That camera out the door, or not out the door, but that camera just for the body is $650. That camera does this one right here, the A6000, 11 frames a second, shoots in raw, gives me all the control over all of my settings, ISO, 
shutter, f-stops, so on and so forth. And then as I started using it, I started to see, wow, I can have selective focus. In other words, I can choose the focus point. I started to see, wow, I can adjust my Kelvin. You know, I teach workshops to photographers. Some of these $1,000, $1,500 bodies on Nikon or Canon, they don't give you the option to shoot in Kelvin. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And it's not that they're not putting it on there because it's not financially possible. It is financially possible. Sony's doing it for 650 bucks. So the point I'm trying to make is, I started shooting with it and I absolutely fell in love with it. Within a few days, I couldn't believe I was shooting with it. I went to Detroit, I took all of my Nikon bodies, I took my A6000 and started shooting with it. My Nikon bodies didn't shoot at all. That was a big eye opener for me. Then when I went to Ethiopia, a couple weeks later in early August, I took my 800, my 700, I took all my Nikon glass, took everything. And the Sonys were so overwhelmingly good, I didn't bring the others out. They were there with me. It certainly raised the weight limit on my bags, but I didn't bring them out. And that, that, that was a, an epiphany for me because I'm like, I'm here shooting one of the most important assignments of my life, and I'm doing it with these tiny little mirrorless cameras. See, what happens is pros like to intimidate newer photographers with big cameras, right? It's the proverbial joke of, you know, size matters. They want to come out with these big cannons and they want to show you how big their cameras are and that makes them a pro. In fact, since I've switched to these, one of the biggest uh, or most frequently asked questions that I get is, how do you show up to a wedding with these tiny cameras and expect people to take you seriously? My response is, if you're worried about the size of my camera, you're worried about the wrong thing. Look at my shots. Look at my shots. See what I produce. And now it's funny, I'll just walk right up to my clients and I'll say, look at this camera. Look at this camera. This is the newest thing on the market. It's better than anything out there. And they don't know. They'll just say, wow, that's amazing. And guess what? I'm not lying. It really is that good. And I'm going to get into the reasons now. So I took that to Ethiopia. Took a couple of 6000s to Ethiopia. Came back. Then I'm like, that's it. I'm jumping in uh, hook, line, and sinker. And I went and I bought the A7S, which is the full frame mirrorless. That camera's off the charts, off the charts good, guys. It is just, <laughs> it's mind-blowingly good. I bought that A7S and uh, the last couple shoots I've gone out, and you guys know I travel all over the world, last couple shoots I've gone out on, I haven't taken my Nikons. Um, so I'm, again, I'm not hating on Nikon. I love the Nikon people and I love, I love that, that, I'll always have an emotional tie to them. My dad shot Nikon, I shoot Nikon, I love Nikon, but the technology is not there. I have an obligation not only to myself, but to my clients to deliver the best possible products, and I can do that with Sony. So let me get into my list. Here we go. Take it out of my pocket. Reasons why I left Nikon and married Sony. The price, okay? I already mentioned it. A6,650, guys. That's ridiculous. It's 11 frames a second. Shoots in raw. Kelvin. Gives you all the control. 24 megapixels, okay? The A7S, it's $2,500. ISO, 409,000. Are you hearing that? 409,000. You know what the equivalent is for an icon? It's the D4S. You know how much a D4S runs? $6,500. I can practically buy three of them. Three of the A7S's for one D4S. And here's what's, here's what's even better. The, D4, the A7S, the native ISO resolution is up to 100,000. On the D4S, it's only 25,000. Now, for you guys who understand native versus expanded ISO, it makes a huge difference. L L I'll explain it this way. Because bottom line is what you're doing is your camera is tricking, I don't want to make this too techy, but your camera is tricking itself into thinking that it's giving a better, better ISO. It's actually doubling or, or coupling the image. Bottom line is if you understand digital zoom versus optical zoom, optical zoom is true. That's what native ISO resolution is. Digital zoom is a bunch of crap. All it's doing is cropping into the image and it's de degrading your image quality. So the bottom line is expanded ISO is the same as digital zoom, whereas native ISO is the same as optical zoom. So um, that shoots, that gives me four times the amount of light output compared to a D4S and it costs $4,000 less. You do the math. Weight, okay? Since these mirrorless, these are tiny little cameras, the weight is significant. Now you might say, oh, buck up, quit being such a wussy, Jason. That's fine, you can call me whatever names you want, I don't care. The bottom line is, when you are not bogged down by huge heavy cameras, it unleashes you create creatively. It really does. When you can get around, now I can shoot all day like I used to shoot at the beginning of my shoots. 
See, at the beginning of my shoots, I'm on the ground, I'm moving all over the place, I'm up high, down low, so on and so forth. Now I'm getting great shots no matter where I go because the weight is not pulling down on me. So that's why I love, love, love these cameras. Number three, electronic viewfinder. If you guys don't know what electronic viewfinder is, you need to figure it out. Because these are mirrorless, they don't have an optical viewfinder. Now you might think that that's a negative. It's a huge positive. With the optical, with the electronic viewfinder, when you make the changes in your camera, you can actually see the light, the output, see what it's going to be before you take the shot. With your optical zoom cameras, you have to see the picture. You only see what, what the naked eye can see. So if it's dark, that's all you see. With these, you're actually seeing the change like you are in live view. So you can take pictures and know before you take the shot that it's going to be amazing. Isn't that what we all want? Amazing shots? I, I, this is a no-brainer to me. I don't know why more people don't get into this stuff. Electronic viewfinders are absolutely the way to go. And to that end, the technology in DSLRs is very antiquated. And it's, that's why I call DSLRs dinosaurs. Believe me guys, the output on these, the, 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 the quality of these is amazing and you're going to see when you start using them. The tilt screen, okay? Pros like to poo-poo and uh, make fun of people who use live view, uh, tilt screens, everything. That's ridiculous. So let me get this straight. I can take this one camera, I can turn it up and I can make myself, I can give myself the viewing size of a guy, I'm, I'm about six foot tall, a little less. That's what, another 18 inches? Seven and a half feet tall. I can get the same eye angle, eye perspective of a guy who's seven and a half feet tall. I can get down low and get the same one, I'll keep this politically correct, as somebody who's short, okay? The bottom line is, it makes no sense why you shouldn't use a tiltable screen. They're amazing, and once you start using it, trust me, you'll agree. Focus peaking, zebra. I have no idea why Nikon and Canon don't have these. Some of the Canon, some of the video, the video cameras have these, but again, they have focus peaking inside, okay, inside of the camera. You guys want to know what focus peaking is? This is amazing. You take the camera and it, it actually shows you the red marks and shows you where your camera is in perfect focus. And you might be saying, well, that's only a manual focus. Well, guess what, guys? You ever do uh, ring shots? You ever do any close-up work? You ever do any night photography where you can't see with your naked eye the way it should be, the way you, you can't see the focus? You're trying, to fi you're trying to focus out to infinity, but you can't figure out exactly where that is on your lens? You can do it with focus peaking. It's truly amazing. Once you start using it, you'll love it. Zebra. Another thing on there, these little zebra lines come up and they'll tell you when your shot is overexposed. Now, I know the pros out there might be sitting there saying, oh, well, you should be able to do that just with your eyes. Give me a break, that's ridiculous. The bottom line is, if you know what you're doing, guys, and if these cameras can help you get a better shot before you take it, you're gonna be up 10 times better off than not. Memory card compatibility. That's something I really hated. I used to take cards from my D700, I'd put them into my D3. And it wouldn't read, the, it wouldn't show me. It would, only, it would only say like, if the card was supposed to have 200 shots, it would only show me that well, if I took some on it, I only had 150 left, for example. So I knew something's on the card. But if I only had my D3 available to me, my D, D700's in the car, or it's, I didn't bring it on that assignment, I can't see what's on that card, so I'm terrified to write over it. Now, you might be saying, well, just make sure you do that at home. That's fine. 99% of the time, that's what I do. But there are times, there really are times that you get out there and you don't know what's on your cards, and you need to know, because you need the space, but you're terrified to write over it. On these Sonys, with I can go from A6000 to an A7S. I can go from any of these NEX video cameras, any of these. I can view the video files from the video camera that, that's recording me on my A6000. That's ridiculous, okay? It's ridiculous, but actually it makes common sense. It makes no sense why they wouldn't do it otherwise. The bottom line is Nikon and Canon need to be able to do that. Now, I'm not an expert in Canon. Canon might do that, I doubt it. I know Nikon doesn't, or at least they didn't on their older models. The bottom line is that is huge. And it's just stuff that makes sense. It's not like it's, it's mind-blowing. It's just stuff that should, they should already be doing. Don't understand why they don't. Upload to the phone. I can take a picture of you standing right there. Okay, just took the picture of me being recorded. I can say, hey, you know what? That's a cool shot. I'm gonna send this to my phone. Now, right now, we are currently in the middle of nowhere. Literally, there's no cell coverage. This is being sent by a Wi-Fi network that the camera sets up and the phone connects to. 
Okay, I'm showing you this in real time. I'm not going to cut the video. I want you to see how fast this works. This is literally sending it. This has now sent the image from my camera right to my phone. Right to my phone. What did that take? 10 seconds? That's just stupid. Now, I know a lot of pros out there. <sighs> I don't need that. I don't need that. Of course you need that. We live in a social media age. How many photographers complain that they go to events, weddings, whatever it might be, take pictures, but the guests take pictures with their iPhones or Androids, whatever, and they post them up on Facebook and they steal their thunder? We complain about that. We try to come up with these complex ways in which we're going to bring our laptop and bring a wireless card and import the footage and bring an external hard drive and upload it. I just did it in 10 seconds. 10 seconds. And you can be sharing photos. I now beat all the guests to the punch. I just did a recent wedding where the bride and groom had a hashtag for Instagram. I was hashtagging and putting all the images up before the guests did. Bride and groom were like, how did you do that? That's amazing. Guys, it's simple. For somebody like me who I, I love social media and most photographers should, social media is fantastic. With that social media, this now gives you the ability to update your, your fans, your followers, whoever, all around the world with the simple click of a button. You don't have to be connected to the internet. So now when my cell phone has coverage again, just go right down, plug it in, boom. Hey, look at the shot I just took. It's amazing, guys. Uh, smart remote, live view. This is another thing that it does. How many of us have pocket wizards or whatever else? We try to figure out crafty ways to take pictures off camera. I'm gonna show this something to you that's super cool. All right, so now I click the Play Memories app on my phone, which is by Sony and it's free. I can connect to my camera, okay? And what this is gonna do is it's going to give me a live view from my camera. I can actually show you, see that? Tell me that's not cool. That's amazing. I can literally look at what's going on in my camera. So I can sit here, say, hey, that looks pretty cool. Took a picture <laughs> with my phone <laughs> from my camera. Then it sends it right to my phone. Nikon and Canon, wake up! Why don't you do cool stuff like that? That's amazing. Now, again, you might be saying, oh, that's a, that's a consumer little uh, gimmick. It's not a consumer gimmick. Last night I was doing really advanced light painting and I was able to walk around the entire room and take pictures with my phone, with my camera set up on a tripod, and I was able to move around with a video light or off-camera flash and create amazing imagery by using this. Guess what? I can, exp I can adjust, watch this, watch this camera. I can adjust the exposure compensation with my phone on the camera. Tell me that's not amazing. That's outrageous is what it is. That's just flat ridiculous. <laughs> I still, it's, and I just took another picture. It's to, even now you can tell it's exciting to me. It's just, it's just the funnest thing. Number nine, cross brand compatibility. Here's what's super cool. Nikon and Canon have been really huge on being proprietary with their stuff and making it difficult for you to use other flashes, other things on their cameras. Now, admittedly, Sony in the past has been very, very much a stickler on that as well. With these new cameras, with the new mirrorless cameras now, they, um, I can use a Nikon flash, a Canon flash, a Young Yo flash, Interfit flash, whatever it is. I can put anything on these cameras and it works, literally. There's no special tinkering, there's no special anything. So this is an, a Nikon SB910. The Sony, no special arrangement, no special configuration. I'm just gonna slide it on and it fires. And it fires. And it fires. Oh, and it's sending them to my phone because I still have that set up. Nothing, no special configuration. Simply put, Sony's made it really easy for photographers. And last but not least is the expanded focus. On these cameras, you can click a little button that gives you expanded focus. The expanded focus zooms way into the shot so you can actually see what you're focusing on. Imagine that. 
you don't have to zoom in and then zoom back out. It actually expands the focus so you can keep your focal length the same. You click that button, it zooms into the shot. You can check to see your focus is perfect. And then click that button, it pulls it right back. You don't have to change the focal length on your lens at all. That is fantastic. I already spoke about the ISO range and how amazing that is. The A7S, again, it's a $2,500 body, $4,000 less than D4S. 4K video. 4K video, guys, not 1080, 4K. Uh, what's another one that's really fun? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this. For all you Nikon users out there, and again, I'm not trying to hit on Nikon, but are you aware of the fact that Nikon uses Sony sensors? You guys privy to that fact? <laughs> Nikon's been using Sony sensors forever. So for all intents and purposes, all of my imagery over the last seven years that I've been a pro has all been on Sony sensors. So in summary, guys, I love Nikon. I just have to go with Sony because the technology is that much better. I know Nikon and Canon are trying to get in there and they're trying to add little adapters to where you can send it to this device or that device or send it to an iPad. This is so incredibly intuitive and simple. It makes it easy. And last but not least, I just want to talk to all camera manufacturers here, especially Nikon and Canon though, and to pros who say, well, that's a, that's, a, that's a feature that should only be available on a, on, a, on a consumer camera or a prosumer camera. That is such a ridiculously stupid statement. My camera, if I have a pro body, should do every freaking thing that a prosumer or a consumer camera does, and then it should do all of my stuff as well as a pro. Why don't they put a, a pop-up flash on pro bodies? That's ridiculous. There are times, despite your best efforts, that you will want a little bit of extra light and you may not have your external flash next to you. Of course, you're always gonna use a video light or external flash, but there's always gonna be that one moment where you need it or your batteries die on your flash in the middle of shooting the first dance. The point I'm trying to make is our cameras should have all of those things. Why should a consumer who pays a third of the cost, a fourth of the cost, a tenth of the cost that I do have more features than I do? That's ridiculous. We should have everything rolled up right into our cameras. In essence, you shouldn't buy a Toyota and have more options than a Lexus. Makes no sense. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've been able to see why I switched. Doesn't mean you need to switch. Just means that I did. And I think that I've made a very good decision based upon the, the output, the, the production, the work that we've been able to, to, to create with these. And just based upon how easy they are to use. And for newer photographers, you are going to absolutely love these things because these things are truly that amazing. And last but not least to Sony, you're not sponsoring me. Why not? I'm selling your cameras, guys. <laughs> so this spot, this spot was not sponsored by Sony. It certainly doesn't mean I wouldn't want a relationship with them. But I did this out of the kindness of my heart because I believe in these things. You guys know I always post videos about how you can improve and, how, and what gear you should be using. And I can't stand behind these cameras any more firmly than I currently do. So until next time, guys, keep shooting. Let me know what questions you have. Gear, whenever I do stuff about gear, it certainly unleashes a ton of questions and a ton of opinions. And you know, let's hopefully not turn, turn this into bashing because I didn't bash an icon on Canon in this. I kind of kept it civil. Let's just be nice. Let's have a good civil discussion and talk about how we can help our camera manufacturers be loyal to us. And that's the last thing I'll hit on, then I'll really end this. Loyalty only goes so far. See, our, the camera fact, manufacturers have to be loyal back. Loyalty is not a one-way street. It goes both ways. Nikon and Canon, they're choosing not to put the focus peaking and all this other stuff in their cameras. Because if a $650 camera can do it, so can a $1,200 camera, a $2,000 camera, a $5,000 camera. So until next time, guys, keep shooting. Never give up on your dreams. Hopefully, someday you'll be successful. I really hope that for everyone watching this video, I don't, I'm not scared of new photographers, I love new photographers, and hopefully you'll be able to be at a really awesome place like this someday like I am, talking to newer photographers and helping them like I'm helping you. So guys, thanks so much for watching, and remember, remember it's super important. You really do only have one chance to get it right. Talk to you later. Bye.